All right, so in this video, I would like to discuss how to write the solutions for a dependent system of linear equations. So if you recall, when we studied the elimination slash addition method or the substitution method, uh, we had a couple of special cases that happened. I'm going to specifically talk about the elimination slash addition method here, but the concept will carry over to the substitution method as well. Right? So when we had the elimination method, uh, we were trying to eliminate a letter. So you do whatever you have to do to try to make the coefficients of that particular letter be the same, So, but opposite signs, but when you add them up, uh, they go away. And sometimes, um, all the letters disappear. So like on this situation, you have uh, the left side going to zero, because all these just add up to zero, and the right side equals zero. So the idea to look for was if all your letters disappeared, and that's whether you're doing the elimination method or the substitution method, but whenever all your letters disappear, you're left with a statement. And that statement is either going to be true or false. In the case here on the left, we have zero equals zero. That is a true statement. And what that means is we have a dependent system of equations. And uh, if you were to graph them, then one uh, graph would fall on top of the other. They're essentially the same, you know, same line, so they intersect at uh, every single point, so there are an infinite number of solutions. But sometimes, uh, all the letters disappear and you're left with a false statement, like we have over here, z equals 3, that's a false statement. So that means that this is an inconsistent system, and there would be no solution. So graphically, that would mean you'd graph each one of these lines, they'd be parallel, they would not intersect. All right, so again, this idea will carry over to the substitution method, where if all the letters disappear, you're left with either a true statement or a false statement. And that will depend if you have a dependent system or an inconsistent system. Now, in this video, I want to talk about the dependent system. So we know that uh, there are an infinite number of solutions. Now, so now what we can do is write what the form of all those ordered pairs would be. So for example, we've got our infinite solutions over here. So let's take, um, go back to our original system, take one of the two equations, and it really does not matter which one because they're essentially the same when you graph them, right? It's the same line, so it doesn't matter which one. So I'm going to take the first one, x plus y equals 1 there. x plus y equals 1, right? So take one of the two equations and isolate a variable. So get the letter all by itself. It does not really matter which one. Uh, but try to make it uh, easy on yourself. In this case, it doesn't really matter. But I'll go ahead and write y in um, terms of x. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. Like that. And what this means is we're writing y in terms of the variable x. Why is that useful? Well, now if we say we knew a value for x, you'd plug that value for x, do all this stuff to it, and it would tell you what the corresponding y value would be. Everybody see that? Right. So the y value is, is like depending on whatever we pick for the x value. Right. So we say y is, is uh, um, in terms of the variable x. All right, so what would the ordered pairs then look like? Well, we can let x be anything it wants to be. So we're just going to let it be x. Right. But what do the y values then have to be? Well, they have to be negative x plus 1. Right? We just said all that we said y equals negative x plus 1. So the x value is whatever the value is, but the y value is you, you take that x value, multiply it by negative 1, and then add 1 to it, and that's how you get the corresponding y value. So all the y values have this form, the negative x plus 1. And so all the ordered pairs are of the form x, comma, negative x plus 1. Are right with me on that? All right, so we could have just as easily said, well, instead of isolating y, let's isolate x. You would have x equals negative y plus 1. And so now we're, we've written x in terms of the variable y. So which, which letter do we need, need to know a value for first? All right, we need to know the, the value for the y first. All right, so this time we'd say all, right, all the y values are just whatever we choose, but all the x values are negative y plus 1. And so all the ordered pairs would look like this form. Now what's cool is either form, doesn't really matter which form, uh, you still get the same ordered pairs that are solutions to this original system. Alright, so let's try an example. Alright, so we have 4x minus 2y equals 6 and negative 2x plus y equals negative 3. Alright, so to solve this, this system by the elimination method, uh, let's multiply the bottom equation here by 2. So we'll have negative 4x plus 2y 
equals negative 6. Well, the top equation will leave the same. So 4x minus 2y equals 6. And when you add all these up, you get 0 equals 0. And that's a true statement. So we have a dependent system. So there are an infinite number of solutions. So what would those solutions look like? What form would they look like? Well, go back to your original two equations, and again, it does not matter which one, and you want to take one of those equations and isolate a variable. Now, I encourage you to make it easy on yourself. So we can take the second equation down here and isolate y, right, y in terms of x. So you'd have negative 2x plus y equals negative 3. We want to add 2x to both sides. We'd have 2x minus 3. So now we've written y in terms of the variable x. So if we knew a value for x, we'd plug that in, and we'd, then we'd automatically know a value for y. right? So all the ordered pairs look like x is whatever x is, and the y values are 2x minus 3. So all the ordered pairs have that form, x comma 2x minus 3. And that's it. That's probably a better way to write it than just saying, oh, there are an infinite number of solutions. Right, because that doesn't give us much. This, though, tells us the form of what all those would be. And if we need a few of them, we can. Because, say, if x is, if x is um, 1, right, so then you'd plug in 1 for x. 1 for x, you'd have 2 minus 3. So we know that the ordered pair 1, negative 1 is a solution to this um, system. Right? And if x is 0, then we know that the y value has to be negative 3. So we know that 0, negative 3 is also a solution. We can sit there all day, right, and choose values for x, plug them in, and get a corresponding value back for y, and that would be an ordered pair that's a solution to our system. All right? Make sense? All right, so that's how to write the solutions for a dependent system of linear equations. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.